Well, hello, hello, Young and the Restless Daily Recap fans. Today's Daily Recap is for Monday, October the 9th, 2023. Monday, October the 9th. This is going to be a very slow week, I can tell. And actually, I shouldn't say very slow. It's going to be a typical Young and the Restless pace week. <sighs> anyway, we have um, Tucker calling Audra over. And he's telling her, pretty much demanded her, text her. He wanted her to rekindle the flame between her and Kyle. And she's like, I want to know why. He goes, it's just a part of the plan. Make sure you do it. You want to be in the top position running Jabot. You're going to get it done. So she goes, in her mind, okay. Because all he had to say is top position running Jabot. You want to run Jabot. How could Audra run a company of that size? But you know what? Tell her anything. Her ambition and drive will just get the better of her, right? He goes, uh, told her, well, look, you know, pretty much you got to go because I got to get ready. We are crashing a wedding because she goes, how am I supposed to get by security? You know, I'm not on the invite list. She goes, he goes, you're resourceful. So next thing we know, we see Audra showing up, right? Um, Jack, I guess she texts Kyle. And, no, I don't think so. I think she just showed up. Jack uh, and Diane, they say their vows. Kyle officiates. You know, Jack actually genuinely looks very, very happy with Diane. And, you know, and, and they've kept her character so squeaky clean for this whole year and a half. It's interesting to me. Because we all know Diane Jenkins. This is not her. I'm really waiting for the tr her true self to come out. You know, she's loving this. She's loving. She got right back where she wanted. But yet, there's going to be something else. There's going to be. I just feel it, right? So anyway, cute ceremony. You know, the little hand-picked guest, hand few people, cast members, of course, and they all go over and take turns congratulating the happy couple, and they give toast, and Nikki's toast was a little bit questionable. As she's speaking, Jack is kind of tapping his glass with his finger, like, okay, Nick. Okay, Nick. You know, Nick is a little nickname for Nikki. Okay, Nick. Right. So it wasn't that it wasn't too bad, but it wasn't like really friendly. I mean, it wasn't really happy. It was kind of ooh, ominous a bit, whatever. And Diane is just looking at her like, <laughs> but guess who they show? And for the life of me, I couldn't figure out where what soap was was she on? I know I liked her. I know she could pull some tears, but I'm thinking, you know what? She should be Abby Newman, right? She should be Abby because I know the person playing Abby now, I saw her on an interview. She and her husband are having a house built from the ground up in Tennessee and she's moving there. Now, I don't see how she's going to still be able to work on The Young and the Restless even though they don't have Abby in all scenes, but they have her enough. The character is established enough and I can't see her doing that plane ride constantly. She's got two small girls and that's why they're building the house and wanted to live there. The huge acres of land, right? And the house is almost done. So it's going to be interesting. And I thought they should have saved her to play Abby. So then I did some digging on the internet. She was a previous version of Abby. No wonder. I'm thinking she reminds huh. Who was she? And she played Kiki Jerome on General Hospital. I liked Kiki. I really liked Kiki. So you could tell the actress Nikki was so comfortable with her. Now she took her to the wedding. Why would you take your assistant to the wedding? I don't know. Well, this is Newman Media, but they weren't covering a piece on the wedding. 
So she's just everybody that walked up to Jack and and Diane. She was said, "Ooh, that's Devon Hamilton. He's the the I mean Devon Winters. He is the Winters in Hamilton Winters. Ooh, ooh, that's I mean everybody that walked up. She gave a ooh, that's Nate Hastings. He's related to the family. He's you know C O O." At Newman, at Newman Enterprises right now. Uh, you know, she just, but she just ran down everybody. Oh, Tracy, she's got such a good heart. She said, she goes, no, I know who she is. She is a talented author because the assistant is a fan of Tracy's writing. But I thought, huh, interesting that they're bringing her on the show. We have, who's available, everybody? Adam's available. She's not Adam's type. Billy is available, but I don't know if they're going to have his character wait for the actress Chelsea to come off of maternity leave. Kyle, nah, mm -mm. she won't go for Kyle because uh, Nikki ain't going to let her. <laughs> Kyle is a no go. So it's between Adam, it's between, um, Billy. That's who I could see she's go that that's going to end up going for her. So we shall see. So it's funny. Nikki is talking to Diane. Or no, she's back talking to her assistant. She left talking from Diane. She was getting ready to go back to her assistant. But she turned and she saw Audra. Not everybody. Look at Audra's face. Look at her body language. Holding the stem of the wine glass off to the side, leaning against. I mean, and her face showed, I'm bored. I don't want to be here. It's like nobody invited you. Why are you there? Right? And the assistant, Claire, was just checking out Audra, just looking at her. Hmm. Just looking, trying to figure her out. You know, it's interesting. Claire, they're getting ready to give her a storyline. This assistant is getting ready to get a storyline. So Audra, let's see, she's looking crazy. And then we have, let's see, Summer. Oh, Summer and Kyle were talking. And they were actually getting along very well, talking about Harrison. Poor Harrison got sick. Oh, no, no. Couldn't even come down for an hour to be the ring bearer. So, you know, they were just kind of like, you know, this is nice. Nice, you know, disagree. Be very, very cordial with one another. Very comfortable with one another, right? And Kyle's just looking, not longingly at Summer, but enjoying the fact that there's that familiarity. And they have something in common to talk about. And so as she's talking to him, she gets a glimpse of chance over at the other, at the little snack table, putting stuff on his plate. And so she goes, looks at Kyle. She goes, you know what? I'll check on Harrison a little later. See ya. She starts walking away and Kyle is kind of like, whoa, that our conversation ended abruptly, right? And so he goes, Summer. And she turns, she goes, yeah. And he goes, you look really nice tonight. And she goes, thank you. You look good as well. Turn and she out of there. <laughs> now, it didn't show him watch her go over to Chance, but it showed him once before, I think it was last week, somehow Chance ended up being in the same room where they were all through together and he saw Summer be like summer light up when she see chance and be lying to chance and Kyle was kind of like, hmm, you know. So Sharon is talking to Abby later, and all of a sudden you hear this. Ah! Summer was laughing all loud that little oh, buddy, ah, you do cute too. <laughs> and Sharon is kind of distracted because Abby's like. How are you and Chance? And Sharon's like, fine, fine. And then Summer's laughing. Sharon's looking like, what is going on? So Sharon's kind of like, you know, excuse me, Abby. 
So Sharon walks right over, puts her arm up under Ch around Chance's arm. Summer, this is fun, isn't it? And Summer, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We're, oh, geez, geez. She's like, uh, yeah, yeah. And Sharon's just looking at her like, this is my man. She arm locked him. And what could Summer do? But look, you know, now they didn't show Sharon take Chance away. They didn't have to. But Summer's face sure came off of that laugh. Mouth open. Now, yeah. Sharon staked her claim. And all Summer could do was look. Right? And men being the way men want to be, pretend to be, Chance is oblivious. You don't, he doesn't know Summer's flirty. He doesn't know he's actually being in, uh, uh, inviting the attention from her. Sharon comes over, stakes her claim. He don't know that's what's happening. I'm just good old Chance. Anyway, let's see. I think that is it for today. Yes, that's it for today. We, oh, we have Tucker crashing and security alerted Jack to Tucker's presence. Tucker had a box and it's a gift for them. And Jack's like, I don't want this gift. He goes, well, just take it. You know, I just want to make peace. I want to, you know, I, I'm, I'm done with the animosity and this is just my way of showing it. And he goes, so Billy sees Jack get up. So Billy follows and Billy's behind Jack and he, or and then he steps to the side of Jack said, Jack, you want me to be the honors of throwing this guy out? And so Tucker's like, I just want to leave a gift. Just want to leave a gift. So now Mamie has to go to the powder room conveniently. And as they're talking, and Jack is like, we want nothing from you. And you have the nerve of you to come and impose yourself on a day like today, right? And so Tucker's saying something to Jack. And Mamie comes in, but she's behind Jack and Billy, kind of by one of the credenzas. And Devon and Abby are in the room. And Devon is like, Tucker, I don't think this is the time or the place for you to be here. And he goes, well, no, to the, yeah, no, I, I need to do this. And so Tucker, as he's talking, he catches sight of Mamie. Devon looks to see where Tucker's eyes are going to. And Mamie is looking at Tucker too. Like, okay, what are you doing? Or, like, it was strange. And Devon looked at Mamie and then he looked at Tucker and he's thinking, hmm. What's the connection with these two? Because the way Mamie was positioned, it was almost like she was listening for her part to play or she's in on it and she was interested in seeing Tucker's part in this. I don't know. I I, I didn't get it. So Devon sees, um, let's see, uh, let's see. The, yeah, Devon just notices the look between Tuck, Tucker and Mamie. Um, and then I think that's about it. Yep, that's about it for today. Nothing too much. You know, just back and forth, Jack and Diane. <laughs> Nothing too much else happening. So that's it. Let's see what Comment Corner, Comment Corner has to offer. Comment Corner. Brooklyn says, maybe it was Nina... And Mamie was that Mamie was talking to on the phone. I don't know. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Great recap, pretty lady. Uh, pretty daily recap lady. Thank you so much, Brooklyn. And then Annette says, I bet she was talking to Ashley. Um, I don't know. She, I don't know. But I don't think it was Ashley. Um, Anita says, Lauren could have used her store's VIP, exclusive VIP delivery service, yep, and transport Diane's dress, to transport Diane's, Diane's dress to the Abbott Mansion. I didn't understand why Lauren needed Chloe to deliver the dress. Oh, I forgot. 
it's a soap. I know, huh? Because there was no reason. I told you, when would Lauren be waiting in a coffee house? Lauren would have said, look, here's uh, if, if she needed Chloe to be messenger. Chloe is in my office, hanging up on the dress hook in my office. Or actually, I'm sorry. Lauren could have took it by herself. Just say, hey, y'all, look, run out. Come get it. I'm on my way to the airport. But that's it. So thank you for comment corner, comment corner. That's it for the comments. I will be back tomorrow for another daily recap of The Young and the Restless.